When people say they like jazz, they usually imagine this. And not this. <laughs> From my perspective, free and or avant-garde jazz is perhaps the truest, most interesting point in jazz music history. And this is because it fully achieves what jazz music was trying to do from the very beginning, which is the emancipation of all the rules and limitations that traditional music had set. It gradually evolved from following quite simple chord progressions to more improvisation and finally a brand new experimental structure thus reaching complete creative freedom. In this video, I'll review 10 of my favorite free and avant-garde jazz albums. These are slightly different terms, and some of my choices may not belong under this spectrum. However, I decided to include them because of their groundbreaking concepts and innovative techniques. Unfortunately, I can't show you the clips from the albums because free jazz isn't really free, isn't it? So I urge you to go look for the albums and buy them if you like them. Number 10. Albert Eiler, Spiritual Unity This is one of the albums that actually brought free jazz into attention. It was considered to be shockingly different. So different, in fact, that some critics didn't even categorize it as free jazz, but as something else. If that isn't freedom, I don't know what is. The thing with this album is that each one of the elements of the improvisation seems to go on a completely different path, to the point in which it really takes some effort to wrap your mind around it. Of course it's got some vamps, but they are very soon lost in the apparent lack of form. Ultimately, Eiler was more about the pure sound that he could make with his instrument, and not so much about the rhythms and melodies. Number 9. Peter Brotsman, Machine Gun to my ears, this is perhaps the heaviest, noisiest jazz album ever recorded. Although free jazzers were already experimenting with dissonance, Peter Brotsman made it sound like actual distortion. It only takes a few seconds into the album to hear this. After all, it's eight instruments at the same time, much like the Ornette Coleman double quartet, of which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Quick history lesson. Blast beats are a drum technique commonly used in death metal and other extremes of genres. However, its origin comes from jazz music. Just listen to this solo by Max Roach and Sonny Rollins' St. Thomas. Listening to Brotsman Machine Gun is also a definite proof that this statement is true. The drums shred as fast as possible, thus honoring the album's title, and the horns shriek as loud as a thousand souls begging to be saved, or something like that. I recommend this album only for the already initiated or the very brave. Number 8. Pharaoh Sanders, Karma. Sanders was a musician that accompanied John Coltrane in his spiritual era, so he was naturally infected by many of the concepts that made Coltrane so fresh in that time. Hell, the introductory bass line to Karma is a nod to Coltrane's A Love Supreme, but then it takes a completely different path. Karma explores a wider range of sounds that certainly take you to a different plane of existence. Even though the album starts in a fairly melodic mood, at half it fades into an incredibly powerful explosion in which the musicians are no longer a different entity from their instruments. I mean, it's just amazing. Number 7. Cecil Taylor, Unit Structures what makes this album so good is Taylor's fast atonal sweeps all across his piano and that, unlike other free jazz albums of the era, gives place to lengthy and very interesting solos from all the musicians. As violent as it is, it's honestly easy to sit through it because of how fascinating it all becomes. I believe it's quite a good start if you want to get into free jazz and, you know, scare your friends at parties. Number 6. Eric Dolphy, Out to Lunch Alright, maybe this one doesn't fit much into the free jazz category, but it's certainly avant-garde. It is deeply influenced by neoclassical music, or at least that's what I hear. Lots of Stravinsky and Bartok in the way, especially because this album is not just a lot of dissonance thrown together. No, it's actually got a definite structure, though it runs by the boundaries. Eric Dolphy's soloing is heavily bebop influenced. 
harmonically speaking. But it distorts the line so much and the rhythmic section is so complex that it's transformed into something completely different. And of course the vibraphone gives the album a very fresh, sweet flavor. Andrew Hill, Point of Departure. This is another release that's just very arguably under the free jazz umbrella, but it only takes a few minutes in to notice how original and demanding it is. Most of the tracks are very fast paced pop pieces with dissonant solos, although to me the highlight of the album is the last composition, Dedication, which is a very dark slow tune, chilling to the bone. Again, this album feels inspired by a traditional jazz and classical harmony alike. And hey, Eric Dolphy is in it too. Number 4. John Zorn, Naked City John Zorn! For me, the master of the avant-garde and one of the most creative souls in contemporary music. It was Naked City, the album that brought him to international attention and damn it, you can see why. This record is as diverse as it is fun and original and at the same time it pays homage to more traditional genres like soft rock and blues and even grindcore and it just has to be heard to be believed. Zorn blows his lungs out of the sax and it just screams and goes all the way to create one of the most dense and creative musical landscapes ever written. I just love this, you can see. The best part is how unpredictable it all is. Zorn doesn't care about transitions, it's just one style after the other in a schizophrenic kind of way. Number 3. Ornette Coleman, The Shape of Jazz to Come. Now this is the free jazz milestone. And although Ornette Coleman himself would take it further one year later with his record Free Jazz, from which the genre actually took the name, it was the shape of jazz to come that was responsible for all the free jazz madness in the 60s. All the pieces follow a quite traditional style in terms of structure. This is a main theme, is followed by a solo and then goes back to the theme. The true innovation is that it dropped completely the chord changes. Now the musicians were free to improvise however they wanted without being restrained by wrong notes. And the album didn't feature piano or any other chordal instrument. So harmonically speaking, yes, it feels really out there. But it's not all that shocking. The album's got some fairly catchy melodies, so much that the opening tune Lonely Woman became a jazz standard and Coleman's most recognized piece. Number 2. Miles Davis, Bitches Brew. Unexpected choice, I know, but in case you haven't listened to this, you really are missing one of the most adventurous, amazing jazz recordings in history. Davis left the squinted and modal jazz concepts to bring jazz fusion, which is a combination of jazz harmonies with rock structures and instrumentation. You can see this from his previous album in a silent way, but it wasn't until Bitches Brew that he actually set the deal for what fusion could be all about. The album is rife with texture and rhythmical playfulness and it's all divided into very long pieces. Davis played along 14 different musicians, most of them playing different lines at the same time. We have two drummers at the same time, double double bass at the same time, you call it. Davis didn't really leave any blank spaces in this masterpiece, which is by the way very rewarding after numerous listens. Yeah, I don't think you can fully digest all that's going on on the first time, nor the second. As all great pieces of art, it demands patience and repeated visits. Number 1. John Coltrane, Ascension Ascension is a turning point in Coltrane's career. I mean, when you look back into his style, you notice there wasn't anything like it. Not by him, nor anyone else. It was however inspired by Coleman's free jazz, in the sense that it was an octet, or a double quartet in Coleman's case. Although Coltrane said his record was a big band thing? Sure. After this record, free form became the main interest for the most adventurous jazz musicians, and even Coltrane didn't stop producing these very raw, visceral albums, which to me say all that you need to know about his music and his message. The album actually follows a simple idea, 
a main collective improvised theme alternating with solos performed by all and each one of the members on this record. Pharaoh Sanders was on this album and his is actually my favorite part of it. That overblowing is just <laughs> oh man out of this world. That would be it, I hope you like this list and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Also, if you've got any other noisy jazz album, leave it on the comments and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching.